Now that we have our deformers added to our 3D text, our next step is to add animation controls to make it easier and quicker to animate. Right now, without any controls, if I wanted to animate these deformers, I would have to click on the 3D text, scroll down under the channel box to inputs, and then choose the deformer I want to animate and then go ahead and animate it. Also, every time I set a keyframe for the deformers, if I don't have these inputs selected, they will not get keyframed. For example, even if I bend the text, if I accidentally deselect it and if I just click on the 3D text itself and press S on my keyboard to set a keyframe, the translation, rotation, scale, and visibility of the object get keyed, but the bend did not get keyed because the bend input was not displayed, was not open under the channel box. So if I want to keyframe the bend, I'd have to open up bend and then press S. Now you see the bend attributes turn red, that means they got keyframed. The same would apply for the squash and the twist deformers. Unless that deformer is open and its attributes are visible, it will not get keyframed when I press S. I'm going to undo all the keyframing that I did and also undo the bend. Once I set up a control object, I'll add custom attributes to the control object. In my case, I'll add a circle just below the letter. And those custom attributes will be visible in the channel box and it will be much easier to keyframe the bend, the twist, and the squash as you will see. So let me start by creating a circle. So under the curves and surfaces shelf of Maya, I click on circle. So I'm going to move the circle under the letter 3 and I'll make it bigger either by adjusting the radius under its channel box inputs or by scaling it. In this case, I'm going to adjust the radius. I just want it a little bigger than the, uh, the 3 and I want to place it so that it is evenly placed around the base of the number or the letter. I will name this object control and then I'll add an underscore and then in this case it's the number 3 so I'll say 3. So before I go ahead and add any custom attributes to this control I want to do a few things. First I want to parent the number 3 itself and all of the deformer handles to this circle so that when I grab the circle and move it, the number 3 moves along with all its deformations. This way, if I want to make the characters fall in, drop into the scene or hop in, I can just grab the circle and animate the circle. The letter will follow and all of the deformers will follow. But also, before I do that, I would like to have all of the translate, rotate, and scale values at the default so that this becomes like the home position for this control. And in Maya, this is really easy to do. If you want to reset all these values to the defaults, you just select the object and go up to Modify, Freeze Transformations. You notice that all of the transforms are reset to their default values. That means the translates are 0, the rotates are 0, and the scale values are 1. Now I will parent the number 3 to the circle. So I select the child object first, then shift select the parent, and press P on my keyboard. Now the number 3 is parented to the circle, so if I move the circle, the number moves with it. But the uh, deformer handles stay behind. 
My next step is to parent the deformer handles also to the circle. Let me show you why this is important. So if I were to, let's say, bend the number three, and now if I were to move it without moving the deformer handles, you notice as I move away from the deformer handles, the shape starts to look very weird. This is because the deformer handle is literally bending space that the number three is in. So whether the number three is behind the handle, in front of the handle, or directly centered over the handle will decide how the number three bends because all of the space around the deformer handle is bending. So let me undo the bend. So you can see why the deformer handles need to always move with the 3D model. So I will select the squash handle, the twist handle, and the bend handle. So I shift clicked all of these, so they're all selected. Now I shift click the control circle and press P. Now all three of my deformer handles are parented to the control circle. Let me do that test again. I'm going to take the number three, bend it, and now move the circle. Now you notice as I move the circle, the bend stays the same because the bend handle is moving along with the 3D text itself. So now we have a solid you know, hierarchy with the letter and the controls all parented to the control object. Also the control object's transforms have been reset. Now I'm ready to add custom attributes to the control object itself. So I select the circle and click on modify, add attribute. I will add four attributes here, a bend, a squash, and then for twist, we have twist start and twist end because the twist handle has a start angle which twists the bottom of the letter and an end angle which twists the top of the letter. So I just type the name of the custom attribute that I want. This can be anything, but I'm gonna name them pretty simply so it's easy to identify what the attribute is. By default, most of these settings are good. Uh, the attribute is keyable, which means it can be animated. And the data type is float, which means it's a number with a decimal point. I can also set up minimum and maximum values for my attributes, but at this time I'm not going to. I just type in the name of the attribute and say add. And you'll notice the bend attribute shows up right here in my channel box. I'll go ahead and do the same for squash, twist, start. and twist end. So I have my four new custom attributes added to my control object for the number three. My next step is to connect these attributes to the matching attributes on the deformers. To do this, I will use a window in Maya called the connection editor. So with the control object selected, I go up to Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor. The Connection Editor in Maya helps you to connect an attribute of one object to an attribute of another object in a way that when we change one, the other will follow. On the left side, I have Control 3, which is the control object around the number 3. And I can see all of its attributes below. Now don't get overwhelmed by all these attributes. We are only interested in these four at the bottom, bend, squash, twist, start, and twist, end. On the right side, one by one, I will choose all of these deformers, and then we will connect these four custom attributes to the 
appropriate attributes of the deformer itself. So first let's do the bend. So I select the number 3. Under the channel box I scroll down. Under the inputs I click on the bend deformer itself, not the handle, but the deformer itself that is controlling the bend of the letter 3. Now I say in the connection editor, reload right. This loads the actual bend deformer on the right side. So on the left side I have my control object, control 3. On the right side I have the bend deformer of the number 3. So on the left side I will click on the bend attribute of the control object. On the right side I'll click on the curvature of the bend deformer. Now as soon as I click on this pair their names get italicized which means they get slanted and if you look over in the inputs the curvature attribute its value turns yellow to show that something is controlling this value. Now let me test this. I click on the circle, click on the bend attribute and in an empty area of my viewport I middle click and drag to change the value of this bend attribute. And as you can see it is controlling the bend of the deformer. Now I will go on and set up all my remaining connections. Once again I click on the control object, open the connection editor and now on the right side I will load the squash. So I click on the number 3, under inputs I click squash and then reload right. On the left side I click on the squash attribute and on the right side I click on factor which is the attribute that we would have animated if we were directly animating the squash to former. Now that the squash attribute is connected to the factor let us test it. I click on the circle, click on squash, middle click and drag and there you have it. And finally, I will connect the twist, start, and end. So twist, start will connect to start angle and twist, end will connect to end angle. And this is how I can connect multiple attributes. You click on the left side first and then click the matching attribute on the right side. Then go and click another one on the left side. Click its matching attribute on the right side. So that's how these pairs get connected. Now let me test my twist values. So twist start and twist end. So I just undid the value so that everything comes back to zero. And now my control for the number three is set up. I can grab the control to move or rotate the number itself and all the deformers will follow along. Or I can use any of these custom attributes to animate the deformation of the number 3. When I'm done setting up all my controls, I can hide all my deformers by going up to the viewports show menu and unchecking the checkbox next to deformers. This way I only see the object and the control itself which is all I need to animate this number.